What's up, church? Are you ready? Are you ready? God's got a word for you. And I believe, I love these sermons that challenge people. And I love and I believe this is going to challenge you and get in your business. We are in this series called Difference Maker. And if you want to be a difference maker, you're going to have to do what we're going to talk about today. Not what I'm saying. It's what God's saying. So before we start, let's get on our knees and pray uh, and so God can prepare your heart. Because every time we come to church, God, challenge me. Get in my business. Holy Spirit, speak to me. And then encourage me to do what's going to be hard for me to do in my own strength. Make me better. Okay, let's get on our knees. If wherever you're at, get on your knees. If you're in your kitchen, in your bed, roll out of your bed, roll off the couch and get on your knees and let's pray. Okay. Because you're going to need prayer for this one. Trust me. If, if, if I ever preach a sermon that you don't need prayer to, to do, I'm not, uh, something wrong. Because God's always taking us to another level that requires the power of the Holy Spirit in our life. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your goodness. Lord, I pray you prepare people's hearts for what they're about to hear and what they're going to be about to be challenged to do. And I know that they will be set free if they allow you to guide them through this message. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, 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 amen. Let's get our Bibles out. Let's get our Bibles out. I've got to put my skinny jeans down. I remember the first time I, I went and tried on skinny jeans. I came out of the dressing room like this. <laughs> it was like a mummy. Now I'm just flowing with them, okay. Hey, let's go. Get your Bibles out. Get your Bibles out. We're going to turn on the count of three. Lift your Bibles up and say word. One, two, three, say word. Turn to Matthew <clears throat> chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. The Holy Spirit is going to get in your business today. Ooh, going to get in your business. Matthew chapter 6. I, um, I haven't played golf in like two years because the place where I was going, the range was open on Monday, which is my day off, and they closed. Threw me off. And then my coach left and I've just kind of been like a lost puppy for a year and a half or so. So the other day I figured I'm, I'm going to go back. I think it was Saturday or something. I went down there. And when I was at the range, this guy pulls up in this sweet white, all white on white Rolls Royce. Convertible. <laughs> he had his golf clubs in the back seat sticking up. I'm like, dang. So he was over there putting on the putting green, and, and, and I, I was walking off, and I saw him. I had seen him drive, seen him before in his car. And so I, I knew that that was his car because there was a bunch of people out there. And I said, hey, man, is that your car? He said, yeah. I said, um, so I had never met the guy. And, I, yeah, I'm that guy that talks to whoever. And I said, look, can I, can I ask you a favor? And he said, yeah, what? I said, if your car has babies like puppies, can I have one? You know how people have a dog and have puppies and they just, I just, like, like a baby Rolls, you know, like maybe a $10,000 Rolls. And so we got to talking about a bunch of stuff and, uh, but, and we got to know each other, blah, 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 blah. Um, do you know that unforgiveness has children? If you are harboring unforgiveness for someone, it is going to have children. It's going to bear puppies, kittens, babies, anger, resentment, bitterness, jealousy, all the envy. The longer you hold hopelessness, depression, discouragement, unforgiveness is a burden on you. You know, the devil tells us if we don't forgive somebody and we talk about them and we just beat them up and talk about them, to talk behind their back to people, that we're hurting them, we're hurting us. It has even physical ramifications. In other words, forgiveness brings health to the bone. If you are going to be a difference maker, you have to walk in forgiveness. I'm going to say it again. If you are going to be a difference maker, we're in this series called Difference Maker. If you are going to be a difference maker in the kingdom of God and bring the kingdom of God to earth, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. If you are going to be a difference maker, a disciple who makes a difference, you are going to have to walk in forgiveness. I'm going to talk about forgiveness today. Uh, uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 14 to 15. Look what it says. It says, if you forgive men their trespasses, God will forgive you. But if you do not forgive God, people your trespasses, the Father will, will not forgive you. What does that mean? That you got to forgive people. So I want you to think about somebody you got to forgive today. It, it, it may be someone, watch this, that's dead and you're still mad at them. It may be someone that's out of your life and you'll never see them again. You're still mad at them. You're still carrying the burden and they might not even be thinking about you. So today we're going to talk about how a difference maker gives and receives forgiveness. Now, let me, let me tell you this. If you can't give forgiveness, you probably can't receive it and vice versa. If you can't receive it because you're too prideful or you think, you know, I, I, you know I'm just too, I, I got to earn it. No, no, no. If you think you got to earn it, you're going to make other people earn their forgiveness. That's not the forgiveness of the Bible. That's not the forgiveness we're talking about. We're talking about letting it go. Do you know when you ask Christ to forgive you your sin, you know what he, you know what he didn't do? Well, here's what you got to do first. You got to go read these books. You got to shave your head. You got to clean up your life. And then maybe I'll, no, 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 no. He said, okay, let's move on. So we're going to learn today about how to walk in giving and receiving forgiveness. And let me tell you, let me tell you, Forgiveness has blessings beyond what you could ever imagine. When you forgive people, you feel better, the burden's lifted, health comes in your heart, your mind, your body, your relationships, and you are free. And all of a sudden, the lights come on. You can pray all day, read your Bible all day, but if you are harboring unforgiveness, you're still in the dark. And you're wondering why you don't have more joy and more peace and more clarity, because you're harboring unforgiveness. So if you're going to be a disciple who makes a difference, three things we've been going over every week. Let's do a review. You first must be a, a to, to, you must leverage your gifts to do ministry that expands the kingdom of God. So are you forgiving? Are you doing ministry? Number one, every week we're going to go through these three, ministry, mentor, multiply. Are you doing ministry? Number two, are you mentoring, equipping someone else to expand the kingdom of God through, in this particular case, their forgiveness? And number three, are you deploying or multiplying or sending them out to build the kingdom of God? Are you doing ministry yourself? Are you mentoring someone? And are you multiplying? And we do that in the context of groups. Again, text groups to 52525. If you want to get in a group, please or start a group. This is how we're going to do it in this church. You can't just do it sitting there. We'll listen to me once a week, or tw- once a month, however often you watch. you got to get in a group. And if you're church hopping online, great, get word. But be in accountability group at some church where you can grow and be held accountable and, and encourage people and challenge people. So um, I want to t- share a story about Peter. If you turn to Matthew chapter 26. And in this story, Jesus is going to model the ministry of forgiveness, he's going to model the mentoring of forgiveness, and he's going to model the power of multiplying in forgiveness. And this is going to be a powerful example because Jesus is going to forgive Peter. Now, if you remember, Peter was one of his three disciples. He had 12, but then he had his inner circle, Peter, James, and John, who went to certain ministry opportunities that the other nine did not go to. So Peter was one of his main guys. Peter was the guy who stepped out of the boat and walked on water. Peter was the guy who went when he he healed, when he went on the mountain transfiguration. Peter was there when he went and healed, raised the girl from the dead, Jairus' daughter. Peter was one of the three that was there. Um, Peter was the one when Jesus said, I'm going to be arrested, killed. He said, no, 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 no. And Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. Peter was one of his main, main guys. And then Jesus told Peter, you're going to deny me three times. Peter's like, I'll do anything. I'm going to do anything. You're going to deny me three times. And Peter denied Jesus. After Jesus was arrested three times and the last time he denied him, he denied him cursing. I don't know that black and blank, blank guy. Peter. And then this is what happened. In Matthew 26, 75, it says, the rooster went, And Peter remembered the word of the Lord who said, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And he wept and went out and wept 
bitterly. That's the context. Jesus has to decide, is he going to forgive Peter? He had just got arrested, got beat, crucified. And the last thing was Peter denied him. Number one, like Jesus, we engage in the ministry of restoration by forgiving the offender. When you forgive someone, you actually are engaging in a ministry of restoration. Think about this. Peter's walking with Jesus for three years, doing all this ministry. Jesus setting all his disciples up to follow him. Setting his disciples up to do the miracles he does. His, his, his disciples actually did miracles in, the, in that three years. And at the very end, the last thing Peter does is curse and say he doesn't even know him. Not he's not a follower. He doesn't even know him. He's like, we have no relationship. I don't know what you're talking about. He just threw all that mentoring away. All that three-year relationship away. All that three years of ministry, he threw it away by denying Jesus. And then he's like, what am I going to do? Well, Jesus says, look, Jesus is a forgiver. Now, before I tell you what he did, I want you to think of someone in your life. And you say, well, you don't know what they did. Don't matter. Your sin killed Jesus. And when you asked him to forgive you, you know what he said? I forgive you. If you are going to be a difference maker, you can't be a grudge holder. Mm -mm. Can't be a grudge holder. When I used to play football, one of the drills we used to do is we used to carry each other across the field. I don't know what the, what the relevance was. I mean, if you're a running back, you may carry somebody because, it, you know, you're, you're simulating someone trying to tackle you and you carry them. But we used to carry each other and we're just, you know, carrying dudes. It ain't like we're in the army and some dude's going to get hurt and we got to take them to safety. That ain't going to happen. So, but we had to do that. And you always ran slower. You always got tired quicker. And it just, you never will play. You can't, you, it would be impossible impossible to play the game with someone on your back. You cannot make a difference and do what God calls you to do, carrying unforgiveness on your back. Can't do it. Can't do it. And, and, and if you're all depressed, discouraged now, and you're, you're all beating yourself up, and by the way, that unforgiveness is also unforgiveness to yourself. Because you're going to forgive others like you forgive yourself. You know the Bible says love your neighbor as yourself? Because that's what we do. We love other people like we love ourselves. And if you have a hard time loving people, you probably have a hard time loving yourself. Whole nother subject. Whole nother subject. But that, your heart works. That's how your heart works. Your heart is into revenge. Your heart, heart is into payback. And you do it to other people, you do it to yourself. So if you're carrying this, you can't. You can't do ministry. So Jesus dies, rise from the dead. And what's the first thing he says? Remember, you engage in the ministry of restoration. I'm going to restore this relationship by forgiving you. He says in Mark chapter 16, verse 7. This is after he rose from the dead. He says, go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before him to Galilee. There you will see him as he said. You know what the, Holy, the angel said? Make sure you say Peter's name. Now imagine Peter, he denies Jesus, he denies him three times, he gets killed, he watches him die a brutal death. He's like, and, and, he, and he's like, I was wrong. And he's walking around going, man, am I a disciple anymore? Am I, am I, am I, am I, what's my life going to be? I, I don't know what he was thinking, but I know it wasn't good. And three days later, angel says, Jesus wants to see you. They call you by name. Jesus was saying to Peter, Peter, we're not done. Whenever you forgive somebody, you are actually performing a ministry of restoration in your relationship and a restoration of their mission. Why? Because if someone's carrying unforgiveness, especially if they're in despair and feel like they failed God, they're not thinking about what God wants them to do. They're thinking about, man, they're beating themselves up. And by, by Jesus saying... Telling the angel, tell Peter, the rest of the disciples, but Peter by name. I want to see him. Can you imagine him going, he still loves me. Now, here's the interesting thing about this. Jesus took the initiative to Peter. There's somebody in your life that they may have not said anything to you for years. 
They may not have asked you forgiveness. They may not even be aware how much you're mad at them. They may be scared that all you'll do is curse them. I don't know. But it doesn't matter. There is no communication. And God is not only telling you to forgive them, God is telling you to initiate the forgiveness. God is not only telling you to forgive them. He's telling you to initiate the forgiveness and to make sure they know restoration is happening. Number two, like Jesus, we mentor forgivers by giving them a mission past the offense. This is pretty cool. I'm going to read something to you what Jesus says to Peter after he rose from the dead. He's not only going to tell him, I want, to, I want you to get Peter, make sure he knows I want to see him. But he's, then Jesus is going to say, Peter, here's what I want you to do. In other words, not only are me and you cool, I got a job for you. Your, your, your life isn't over. Our relationship is not over. We're just getting started. I have a mission. I'm forgiving you so you can get back on mission. The people in your life, God has called to something. And it could be the unforgiveness between you and that person is an hindrance to their mission. Remember, we are called to build the kingdom of God. That doesn't mean the kingdom of God that we're supposed to build or the part of the kingdom that we're supposed to build is the part of the kingdom that all the people you know is supposed to build. And you don't want to have anything between you and somebody else that's holding them back from them fulfilling their mission in the kingdom of God. And so Jesus was like, look, look, I'm not only going to pursue you to make sure you're cool because I got plans for you. I'm going to tell you and encourage you that I believe in you way beyond what we, where we're at right now. So look what it says in John chapter 21, verse 15 and 19. Look what it says. When they had eaten, this is after he rose from the dead. When they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? He says, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Feed my lamb. Feed my lambs. He said to him a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He says, you know I love you. Yes, Lord. And he said, tend to my sheep. He said to him a third time. Remember how many times the rooster crow? Three times. Oh, he's undoing that. He's unraveling what he unraveled. <laughs> he cursed him three times. Now he's going to bless him three times. He said the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? And Peter was grieved because he had said to him a third time, do you love me? And he said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And he said, Feed my sheep. Most assuredly, I say to you, when you were younger, you girded yourself to walk wherever you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will gird you and carry you where you do not wish. And he spoke this signifying the death that he would glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said, follow me. In other words, Peter, I have a job for you. I forgot about what you said. Now I do, I forgive you. I want to commission you. There are people in your life, you say, well, I am, I'm, I, I'll, I'll send them a note. And God's like, well, how much of the kingdom do you want to build? How much of an impact in the kingdom do you want to make? Because God is shining his son on that person just like he's shining his son on you. God is making the rain fall on that person like he's making the rain fall on you. Rain was a, a good thing to grow crops. So in that sense, it was a, a blessing. God is blessing that person with air just like he's blessing you with air. God has a plan for that person just like he has a plan for you. You want to be part of that? So not only do you initiate the forgiveness, which is going to bring a blessing to them and you. You're letting go of the burden and you're obeying God and God's going to honor you for that and, and deem you trustworthy for more. But you are also going to release that person. And God may even give you a vision for that person to be commissioned and get clarity on their mission in the kingdom. That's part of your mentoring. That they're watching you going, wow, you're not only going to forgive me, <clears throat> but you're going to encourage me. What are they going to do next time someone um, offends them? They'll at least have this example in their head and in their heart. So the first part is you, you perform the ministry of restoration by forgiving. Then you mentor the forgiver by giving them clarity for their mission. And then number three, like Jesus, we multiply forgivers by empowering them to fulfill the mission. In the book of Acts, chapter 2, when the Holy Spirit, the day of Pentecost, when the church first started, Peter was the one to preach. 
and explain what was going on as he heard all these people preaching in different languages and all the people from all over the world that had come to Jerusalem for Pentecost were hearing the gospel preached in all these different languages. And Peter stood up and explained it and preached the gospel full of the Holy Spirit. God said, not only am I going to tell you I want you to, you're going to have a great ministry, I'm going to use you and empower you. And it says those gladly received his word were baptized and that day 3,000 souls were added. 3,000. You know that when God gave the law in Exodus, 3,000 people died. When God gave the Holy Spirit in Acts, 3,000 got saved, got life. I want to encourage you, God wants to forgive you. Now, a lot of you out there who are watching, you've already been forgiven. You have to walk in that, that forgiveness. Not only in the freedom to know that you've been forgiven, but you have to give it away. Because if you're not giving it away, you're going you're gonna to start heaping guilt right back on yourself. And not only guilt of stuff you've done, the guilt of not forgiving. Walk into forgiveness. Let it go. Let it go. It's going to wear you out. But there are some of you who may never ask Jesus to forgive you. You're just going about thinking, hey, I live in America and I'm a Christian nation. I believe in God, of course. And, you know, the man upstairs and all that kind of stuff that people say. God's like, ha, 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 ha. Have you surrendered your life to me? He not only wants to forgive you, he wants to remember your sin no more and transform your life. So I'm going to lead you in a prayer. And this is going to give you an opportunity to receive the forgiveness of God. And when you receive the forgiveness of God, you receive the love of God, the power of God. And empowers you to go forgive other people and walk in of forgiveness. If you are going to be a difference maker, you cannot hold grudges. You can't be walking around angry at this person, angry at that person. That's how the world thinks. That's how the devil wants you to think. That's how selfish people think. No, no, no. You're unselfish. So in the privacy of your heart, I mean, as you, as you bow your heads and close your eyes, I'm going to lead you in a prayer in the privacy of your heart to tell God, God, I admit that I'm a sinner. I'm wrong. I believe that you love me. And I commit my life to you. And guess what he's going to do? If you're faithful and you are doing it by faith, he's going to forgive you. He's going to forgive you. And then he's going to say, now you go do the same. So bow our heads, let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Lord, thank you so much for your faithfulness. Lord, I thank you that you forgave me for all my sin. I thank you that though I can't even count how many times I've offended you, you know every single one, but you choose to remember them no more. If you would like to receive the forgiveness of God, pray this prayer with me in the privacy of your heart. Pray, dear God, I believe that you love me. I admit that I'm a sinner and that the penalty of my sin is death. I believe you died and rose from the dead. And I commit my life to you. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for separating my sin as far as the east is from the west. I commit to walking in forgiveness and extending forgiveness to others. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, please believe God is not mad at you. You can't pay him back. He paid for all your sin on the cross. You can text the word SAVE to 52525. Click the raise your hand button. But God, we want to help you in your journey as you walk in unforgiveness and understand what it means. Also, if you are not in a group, please get in one of our groups. Start one of our groups, a small group, five, ten people. I have a group we meet every week. And in that group, we hold each other accountable. We encourage each other, pray for each other, challenge each other. Teach each other, learn from each other. And if you are going to be a difference maker, you can't do it by yourself. And you can't do it carrying unforgiveness. So next week, we're going to continue the series. 
bring somebody, invite somebody online, and we'll see you next week. God bless you. If God spoke to you during that sermon and you feel like you want to ask Christ to be your Savior, it's as simple as A, B, C. One, admit and accept that you are a sinner. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and he died for your sin and rose from the dead. And then confess yourself as a sinner and say, Jesus, please forgive me of my sin. So if you would like to ask Jesus Christ to be your Savior, I just want you to just look at me right now and pray this prayer with me in the privacy of your heart, knowing that God knows you and loves you very much. Say, dear God, I believe that I'm a sinner. I know the penalty of my sin is death, and I don't want to die and go to hell. But I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord, that he died and rose from the dead for my sin. And I confess myself a sinner and ask him to forgive me of my sin. Jesus, please forgive me of my sin and fill me with the Spirit of God. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, you just ask Christ to be your Savior, we want to know, and we want to email you some resources. So if you just prayed that prayer with me to accept Jesus as your Savior, click on the link that just appeared, and we want to send you some free resources. God bless you, and we'll see you in heaven.